welcome to autumn pretty much winter and welcome to the first ride of the brand new bmw r1300 gs so this is the one which everyone was like oh my god it looks so weird oh it looks so ugly well uh opinions on looks aside um this is more about the dynamic review uh, so to speak in real world scenarios this is we're not riding around spain in a fancy line doing all the stuff with the fancy bmw people this is a real world review of this bike and what most people are going to do on this bike i mean let's face it it's not as if many people are going to go out and spend 18 grand on a brand new bike and then go off-roading in the lanes it's probably most of these bikes as we all know spend most of the time on the road uh, going to various sandwich shops with your girlfriend on the back and enjoying life and that is there is i have no problem with that whatsoever there's going to be no off-roading in this video i'll say that right now because this particular bike is the demonstrator model from vines motorrad in guildford so thank you very much for the loan that's also where i buy my bmws now so yeah so there's going to be no off-road this is going to be a real world first thoughts on riding this bike so we'll do a real quick walk around i know the sun's actually in the wrong place here should we put it over this side and wheel this around it does i mean look this is according to the press bump this is 12 kilograms lighter than the outgoing model and it, i can tell you what it, it does feel it it's, it's a noticeable 12k kgs k jizzles so now we're in the sun we can see this actually really quite lovely color this is the option 719 tarantula can't remember what tarantula -da -da. so this has got the gold wheels and the fancy green paint it also has these fancy option 719 bits i don't know if these are standard to the model if you buy this spec um it also has some nice milled parts on these great big chunky heads so i mean i actually like the way it looks i don't i don't think it's that far away from how it used to look i think these people have gone oh my god it's, it's mad it just looks totally different i don't think it does i think in reality it, it's clearly a gs i, I think the only thing that's slightly different or slightly is considerably different is this headlight unit but again i don't have a problem with that either i think it looks pretty cool but this scoop here and these haunches that's it's unmistakably gs in my opinion i think i'm going to like the adventure version more but there we go what i don't particularly like i mean they've done quite a good job of this this is the radar thing for the adaptive cruise control and it is quite a big flat piece of technology but I think they have sort of hidden it quite well within this scoop. It does look as though the windscreen is in its high position, but it's not. It's actually in its low position, which is now electric. We'll get onto that in a minute. But yeah, this is the big 1300cc engine. And first of all, you know, they used to have quite a lot of returns, manufacturer complaints about corrosion. And they seem to have addressed this whole, that whole issue with this real hard wearing it feels almost granity type i don't know i guess it's a paint finish on this um and that's over everything that i can see it's got a really nice new oil window here which is much clearer than the little circle which gets covered in goo and you can't see it so that's really nice what else have we got as we go through so this is it, the, the the trellis frame is now gone this is the sheet metal frame that they call it which looks considerably more modern again the rear subframe is now a cast unit so it's a big chunky nice thing which should be easier to clean um, i know that's people are like oh easier to clean but honestly having owned five gs's cleaning them is an absolute pain so <laughs> regardless of how it looks or how it feels it's already a win in my book because that's going to be what three seconds with a sponge as opposed to 10 minutes with a q-tip as mentioned this bike has the akropovich exhaust slip on center stand this particular bike has option 719 rear sets uh, this is the new luggage system these are <coughs> very stiff battery connections which mean that your luggage is now keyless i don't particularly like keyless however i think luggage keyless might be all right but i don't know uh, this is the rear radar uh, we don't have a rear light which 
I think personally is a problem. I think when you're sat at a junction with the brake light on indicating, it's very difficult to see the indication light. So I don't know, I'm not entirely convinced by that, but that's the direction they're going in. Uh, again, the shaft drive has been coated in this real rugged material. I believe this shaft is a little bit longer. These, these do say BMW on the brakes, but they are Brembo units. They look really nice. And yeah, that's sort of the exterior commented on quickly. This bike also has option 719 levers. Option 719, by the way, it's it was their internal code for fancy shit. So now anything that says option 719 means fancy shit. It doesn't mean there's an option 720 or 718. It's just 719. So let's go and ride it. Stop faffing around. Oh, this is one little thing. I, I haven't figured out. I'm not quite sure why it does this. But can you see this seat? Without any key movement, you can sort of move it back and forth. Don't really know why it does that, but... There we go. You can raise the seat height. There's actually a flap on the inside of the seat itself that pushes the structure of the seat from within higher. So you don't get a gap in the frame, which I like. I think that's pretty good. Although the um, height doesn't seem to be making that much difference. Right, so we're in the cock pit, the pit of cock. Uh, very familiar place. The biggest change is we've got a big phone flap here this even holds my persian taxi driver spec flippy wallet colored phone thing uh, however it's not contactless charging you still have to plug it in there is a usb in there let's turn it on <laughs> well, i will say it does sound kind of odd it does sound very like picky pocky picky like if a, a cartoon tractor arrived in Fireman Sam. This is maybe what it would sound like. Almost like, um, what was that? Dr. Burp's Bubble Works at Chessington World of Adventures. So it does make some funny sounds. First impressions are it actually feels, I mean, I like granted I have a GS Adventure rather than the standard GS, which this is. Uh, and it does feel quite a lot smaller. I feel I'm definitely lower to the ground. I don't know if this has got the enduro suspension. And it also, apparently reading the bump, it does this sort of auto rising and lowering thing when you're at slow speeds, which is great for small people. But for the biggies, this does feel quite small. I think the, the knee bend, I don't know what you'd call it, but so this, the angle of your hip to knee to ankle is quite intense. It's not intense, it's, no, it's not a sports bike, but it feels like either the pegs have been raised or the seat's been lowered. So it just in that seat position alone, it feels more sporty. You feel more, uh, a little bit more cramped, I would say. The bars feel a bit further you feel like you're over the top of the bike a little more. They feel like they're a bit further forward and maybe slightly lower. So you do already feel like you're in much more of a sporty position, which I don't know if anyone's bought a GS for its sportiness and prowess, but maybe that's what they're going for this time. But what it's never had, now this is quite a complicated process, is an electric window. So let's erect that. You might have noticed the noise go quiet quieter anyway which is a nice touch so yeah so the wind the electric windscreen i mean thank god i mean i think the rt the bmw rt has had an electric windscreen for a good 20 years <laughs> so why it's only just arrived on the flagship model for bmw i don't know but i'm not going to complain and it is pretty decent it's not i am very tall so on the dual carriageway yesterday, we'll get onto it in a minute, but I am right at the top of the, the wind buffet, the Warren buffet. However, <laughs> a big issue with the last screens was they wobbled around, but this is rigid, really nice and stiff. You've got these additional wind deflecting panels down here. From an aesthetic point of view, this really bothers me. This clear, clear, black, clear, thing 
and it's just a funny sh it's just why can't these bits be clear i think if these bits were clear it would be considerably better it's just that you've got this nice clear and, and granted it's fantastic that these are clear because you really can see the road it feels like you really do have an excellent perspective about what's going on and looking for big rocks when you're you know extreme off-roading on your brand new gs uh, so from a from a visual rider perspective it's excellent i don't know it probably looks even weirder on camera you've got this big sort of moustache that you're just staring at right now let's get on to this engine because i think that's probably what you will want to know and i can tell you with authority that it is considerably pokier than the outgoing 1250. almost too pokey <laughs> It is so talky and so powerful that it actually scares me a little bit at this point. I'm not quite used to it. Um, but it is very, very, very grunty. On When you're on damp roads like this and loose traction surfaces or in the rain, I might actually consider using a rain mode on this now because there is so much torque just begging to brake traction that it does actually intimidate me a little bit, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest. And it comes in from so low down, like 2000 RPM, it just absolutely rips. Should we go into, um, let's see if we can go into Dynamic Pro actually and see if that automatically turns the wheelie control off, I don't know if it will. ABS warning. Yeah, it turns the wheelie control off. Sorry, the camera has a funny interference there, it might have just turned off. But that, it's, it's effortless to get the front up. Absolutely effortless. I mean, you're going to do it by mistake a lot, particularly if there's some Doris sat on the back. We've got ABS off. Let's try it. Hang on. Yep. It's really not for the faint-hearted. That's fourth gear, three and a half thousand RPM, and it's just, it's wanting to go skyward. Absolutely at the moment, this is the most dominant thing about this bike, is the, the out outrageous talk outrageous and the other almost as dominant feature is how stiff this bike is it's so much stiffer it's it's solid you can feel all the bumps and i put this in the softest suspension mode i can go in and it's very very stiff now from a dynamics perspective that's gonna be excellent so it's definitely going closer towards the Multistradas and the KTM 1290s of this world whether it needs to do that or not is debatable it's it's not uncomfortable but I think a, a, a long day in the saddle touring around I think your body is gonna it's gonna go at least 50 miles less than um, than it would before the uh, the old farmer Giles start complaining dynamically it still feels typically GS but the chassis is a lot stiffer and it feels more loaded on the front and I don't think <laughs> I've tried dialing out some of the stiffness in fact let's just go into again the, all these things get so bloody complicated let's go into road and see if that automatically adjusts the chassis stiffness and they've lost some buttons on here which I'll get onto in a minute yeah, it's a bit. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, yeah. Okay, that, is, that has taken away some of the edge. I'll give it that. So I think it's one of those things you're gonna have to play around with and find your personal settings. But if you wanna, if <laughs> the G, the GS has just got asboed. So we've done a little bit on the motor. We've done a little bit on the chassis. We've done a bit on the windscreen. A gripe is this new button here. So there's a button on the very let's be honest very old and dated switch gear which i was really hoping would be illuminated in this version but it's not it's even the same plastic molds and everything it's identical but you press this button and then you've got all of the extra stuff to confuse you so you've got the cruise control setting heating windscreen dynamic traction control and damping and it's almost like a shortcut button you can set it to your desired shortcut so let's go to damping for example and then you've got dynamic which we're in now 
and then oh oh god and then it disappears anyway whatever so that is now my shortcut button so when i press the arrows on this thing here it goes to quick change of suspension hold the button down it goes to my second choice which is windscreen activity so let's we can lower that and raise that as we go right let's do a little bit of town i mean it's so violent i'm not saying that's a bad thing but i think a lot of traditional customers might be a little bit put off with how violent it is but i think the younger audience and the ktm multistrada audience are gonna like it i mean first gear is redundant i would just wouldn't even bother using it <laughs> it's too peaky right we'll go um we'll just go through a high street and then uh yeah you can go round roundabouts you know love the other slight gripe i've got and this may be a um an option 719 thing is the gear shifter is really crunchy i don't think the electronics are bad on the actual quick shift unit but it's so crunchy going down is all right but going up it's really oh it's just i can't, I can't do a wheelie mate i'm not doing a wheelie in town bruv can't do a wheelie anyway although when do kids look at gs's and go do a wheelie that's good if you want to impress children <laughs> this is the bike for you <laughs> but yeah so the, the 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 gears the shift lever just feels a little bit crunchy maybe it's because it's a brand new bike which let's face it it is so it just might need a bit of wearing in it's almost got a bit of an electric whine to it as well when you're decelerating and yeah okay let's get a bit of uh, dynamism Dynamite here. Go on and change it. Yeah. ABS warning. Ugh. That's because it's turned AB. That's because it's turned lift control off. I think. So now you've got. If you go into Dynamic Pro, you know. And, and the, my old GS is exactly the same as this. Very irritating. You've now got to put up with this permanent flashing ABS light. So here we go. Wind speed. That's actually pretty good. The uh, the wind buffeting here. I'm all right with that particularly if I come down that's dead quiet that dead quiet like so how's the video going so far if you want to know anything else then let me know in the comments below and I shall reply but I'll only reply if you're subscribed the uh, the Acre exhaust it looks pretty cool but it really doesn't make that much noise I can, I can, I can all I can hear is the sort of cam chains in the heads okay a bit of uh, active cruise control we haven't got a car in front of us at this point, but we'll do it in a minute. Pretty good feature. I have seen these blind spot triangles pop up every now and again as well. If you're into that sort of thing, it's not going to be the difference of me wanting to buy a bike or not. And uh, a lot of this tech is specced within the base price of the vehicle, which is a bit of a shame because it doesn't bother me that much. I prefer a cheaper bike. I'm not a massive fan of, of waiting for the bike to go, oh, you need to brake and then slamming the brakes on. I, I don't know if this is going to do, it's just a slightly unnerving. I used to get uh, freaked out by airbags and my steering wheel. I'd be driving along and then just suddenly thinking about a massive amount of explosives <laughs> aimed at my face. But look, this is very comfortable. It still feels small. Like I feel like the bars are quite close to me, but I'm pretty sure I could, if this was my bike, I would rotate this quite gaudy looking gold handlebar further away from the rider a little bit. And then let's put the suspension in softest possible. This is as chill as it gets. And I remember the other, the other, my GS, like on a motorway, you'd just get some sort of like oscillating dips and it'd be like, wrong, wrong, wrong. Which obviously, if you're on one, it's not a very nice feeling. But if you're just chilling out on, the, on a motorway and you've got 500 miles to do, you want that. It's a bit like uh, Uncle Buck's car. <laughs> when you stop it, it goes all, on the piss yeah this is it's all right i mean it's a very uh, the gs has always been a pretty good all-round motorcycle and look it's it's definitely not no, nothing's been ruined here for everyone who is a massive gs fan nothing's been ruined it's just been inverted commas improved upon depending on your opinion of what you like or don't like i would have liked to have seen a couple of things i would have liked to have seen new backlit switch gear i'm not at this point a massive fan of this shortcut button over here 
yeah, yeah, I'm not a massive fan of that. It sort of makes my brain fry a bit, and I, I'm, I end up going, oh shit, I pressed the wrong button when I should be looking at the road and what's going on around me. I would have liked to have seen a different screen. I think this screen is old. I mean, it's still the best screen, in my opinion, on motorcycles at all. The BMW range has absolutely nailed it with the clarity, the quality. It's, it's incredible, but it just feels a little old now. Even if they maybe rotated it 90 degrees and did a more Dakar-esque screen, that would be quite nice. Because this, again, th th oh, there is a sport mode screen now. Hang on. Let's put it in that while we're talking about it. <laughs> so you can see your brake, your lean angle. Loving it. 27 degrees left and right. Well, absolutely. Marquez, watch out. But it would be nice to just, you almost forget that you're on a GS, you forget you're on this bike. Like they're all the same by the time you jump on a S1000R, double R, they're all the same apart from the big old RTs and stuff. I think I, I, if I owned this bike, I would have to buy a taller seat. You know, when you, particularly when it gets closer to winter and you've got your, I haven't got my thermal liners in these trousers yet, but I'm sure all of you will know the pain of when your, your lining sort of starts crumpling up behind your knees and almost starts cutting your blood supply off. But I can imagine if I had the linings in, it would start getting pretty uncomfortable quite quickly on this. Uh, I welcome the, the, the electric window, very good. The wind protection is better. It's still not RT levels, but what can you do? I really like this extension of the, let me see on the back. I really like this extension of the rubberized seat here. Not only because it stops you having to buy a tank guard, but it feels like you can use more of the bike to be sort of moving around and it, 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 I like that. I think that's nice. Uh, I also believe this bike has lost a litre of fuel from the old one. But then all these modern things should be more fuel efficient. So it's probably going to work out to be exactly the same range. Oh, and they've, they've taken away the start button from around here now. So you've just got this tiny little button on here, which I don't like personally. Oh, and there's a new key, which feels quite nice. It's quite big, but the new key feels nice. Oh, it's quite busy. The side stand's different as well. It's, um, it sticks out quite a long way and it's further forward. And that's the off button, which just feels a bit, I don't know, lacklustre. So look, so there we have it, in a crowd. I mean, look, you, there's an X, I mean, that's an old XR, but you can see that it doesn't, it doesn't look quite as alien and strange in reality as it did on those first initial press shots. So it's, it's, just, a, it's just another bike. It's just the evolution and everyone just needs to get used to it. Look at the size of that top box. That's <laughs> the biggest top box I've ever seen in my life. Right, um, I'm just gonna try and look through the menu here to try and figure out what the hell was going on with the suspension. Dynamic suspension is way too hard for the UK roads on this bike, in my opinion. So what I was gonna try and do was find, oh, go through the menu, download a PDF and try and find enduro mode. Shift like riding mode pre-selection, here we go. Eco, no thanks. So then we should have Enduro Pro on here. Yeah. I wonder if the suspension, hang on, let's change the suspension. Oh, it's automatically an Enduro suspension mode. So there is only one. Okay, so maybe this might be maybe this might be better. But but being an Enduro, you've now lost all your abilities to do everything else. So I don't know. Oh, and cruise control can't be activated in Enduro Pro. Why can't it be activated in Enduro Pro? So this is Enduro suspension mode. This feels nicer, I think. I think it. I, I think that this bike has got so stiff now that you, <laughs> the chassis is so stiff that the um, it's lost a lot of feel, a suppleness in its handling. And I like the slightly wallowy nature of the other ones. I liked it. I mean, I'm I'm assuming. Again, I'll probably have to cut this video quite a lot to a voiceover with my incorrect facts being corrected. But I'm assuming that the enduro suspension mode would be the, the ultimate, the softest of the lot. Wouldn't it? Would it not? That would make sense if it's, if it's designed for off-road. It would, it would have the maximum travel available. 
Also, I've got to remember that my GS is an adventure and I don't know if this, if this bike has got the higher travel suspension or if that's just the enduro bike. So that could be affecting it as well. Oh, so much to learn, isn't it? Yeah, you, where are the days when you just get on an old Africa Twin and just fuck off into the desert? <laughs> that's where I got hit off my bicycle the other day. The other thing I noticed, this cruise control button, my finger fouls the new hand guard. Uh, and these are, these are racing gloves, so these are like effectively the smallest, thinnest gloves you're going to get. So in winter, that's going to be that's going to get really annoying. Going down the box, the, the blipper is smoother than the up shift, I would say. But there we go. Um, I'm sure. Look, I'm sure the internet is absolutely full of a million and million and one other opinions, and you're welcome to go and listen to them. Uh, and I'm sure there'll be people with much more data than this video like oh with grams and numbers and hps and kilowatts but this this video isn't about that it's about what is it in the real world all right let's stop and get some snacks snack attack so here's something that's going to really piss people off <laughs> so you've just locked your bike up and you go oh shit where's my phone you can't get it out because there's the handlebars in the way of the phone flap So what do we reckon? Um, I mean, I like it. I like the way it looks. I, I like the way it rides um, in terms of its dynamic ability. I think it's, it's got a lot stiffer, it's got a lot sportier. And I think actually, this is it's almost what the GS should be, which is more of a, people use GSs a lot as a generic touring bike to tour around Europe but never go off road or never do anything particularly exceptional let's say so I think this actually now it's a really fun bike to ride and I think it's got more youthful I think the I think the image of the old duffer on a GS is quite hard to pull off on this bike if I'm honest with you I think those people are going to go more to the RT or stick with their older, uh, uh, less performance GSs. I think this is much more performance based and it's slight, I think it's changed how, I think it will change how the GS is viewed, which I think is a good thing because it does get a negative press, um, the GS, just because it seems to be a bike for like, oh, hello. I think this is, actually a really really nice bit of kit i think it's going to do really well for them so in summary now the sun's come out uh i think it's sportier it's stiffer it's harder um the technology is bordering on getting annoying but i don't think it is i think once you're used to the bike if this was your own bike i think you would have all the shortcuts worked out and everything would be sorted pretty quickly so uh, I think, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to down market for its technology because the technology that's on it is good and I know loads of people love all that stuff. I think the build quality is excellent. I think that's that's gone up. I think just just little things like how these, uh, these brake cables now come up inside this hugger and the brakes themselves just look really nice. I think the paint quality is really nice. The materials... I think have gone up a step. I like this elongated seat, but if I was going to tour around Europe currently, I wouldn't choose this. I'd choose the older model. But if I was going to have more fun and be a bit more of a renegade, this is definitely the bike to have. So it's interesting. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what everyone else thinks of it. But from riding it today for a couple of hours, that's my snapshot. Okay, all right guys, see you on the next one.